before she has the time to reconsider or think that I'm spying on her, mm -hmm. I will back up so to respect her her uh, nudity, and I will lean back against the tub with my back to her, you know, in that kind of romantic, chatty kind of thing, so that my back is to her, so she knows I'm not looking. Yeah. And <clears throat> so, my lady Eldra, I don't know if you were aware of how long it has been since your brother has been in the city. So she like. She, like, swims over to you a bit and, like, peers over the edge and goes, Oh, I'm more than aware. He didn't come by and see me for such a long time. The coward. I cannot speak to the matter regarding your family's past and history. Let's stop for a moment and get some facts straight. First of all, who are you? I'm a friend of your brother's. You might know me as the master of the Dulahan. The owner. That's the bar where Merrick was staying. Yes. And she thinks back as if she's trying to remember if Merrick ever told her the name of the Dulahan's owner. Mm -hmm. And she goes, what's your name? My name is Dadriel. I was a street urchin who grew up here on the streets of uh, Lier. You would not remember me, of course, for, for most of the time that you have been the mistress of this manse. <laughs> I have been nothing more than a thief and a beggar. And she scoffs at that and she goes, certainly a mistress. Yes, that is exactly what I have been. However, in the past year, my fortunes have changed, and I have come into ownership of the Dulahan, as well as a bunch of uh, adventurous opportunities. Your brother uh, is, in fact, one might say, the instigator of many of those opportunities. But I can tell you this much. He is embroiled in something much bigger and much more fearful than even you might possibly imagine. You are aware that uh, your brother possesses special powers, right? Of course. Are you telling me that my brother parlays with thieves? Not so much... well... More to the point, why exactly are you here on this evening of the party? I'm here to steal something from your husband. Ah, I see. <laughs> but you must, you must understand, I am not a mere thief who steals simply for personal gain. As I have said, I have come into a certain amount of fortune and I'm trying to turn my life around. It is not for personal gain that I am doing this, but for the good of the air and the city that I love and that I grew up in. <laughs> and you need my brother's help? <clears throat> I fear that perhaps your brother would not help if he understood the true nature of what is transpiring beneath the streets of the air. He doesn't seem to fully understand that statement, but she goes, What are you stealing from my husband? He owns something that I have only heard of, known as the Amber Receptacles. Reservoirs, yeah. Reservoirs. Yes. Yeah. And I briefly described them to him. She goes, Oh, yes, of course. Those two baubles. Yes, well... From what I've been led to understand by those like your brother who are aware of such matters, they have the capacity of storing power of significant otherworldly strength. You might remember just some weeks ago, a monstrous creature attacked the city and the great Joven, cleric of Netro, fought it off. Yes, I've heard about him. That was only an inkling of what we are facing. You see, the way I came into contact with your brother and his works was through the release of an ancient demon, a creature by the name of Savannus. And there are those now who would seek to gain access to the power that this demonic creature possesses. Those spheres that your husband owns are necessary tools for such a, an outcome. And unless we can steal them, they will fall into the hands of those who would control this dark power. And who knows what might transpire. The thefts of hundreds and not thousands. If I can steal these, they will be hidden away and not be accessible to those who would take advantage of this power. Savannah is a demon of great darkness. He will call to, to his followers to do all manner of evils. To, to, to kill brother against sister, father against son. Families would be destroyed. <laughs> She scoffs at that comment. Families will be destroyed. <coughs> I know what that feels like. 
but you must not steal the amber receptacles. Or you, yeah, you reservoirs. Can't it. The amber reservoirs. That's actually a problem. Now, tell me, thief, is my brother here this evening? Did he respond to Laos's invitation, as I suggested in our last meeting? Oh, have you not heard? He arrived half an hour ago. He has been in meetings with your husband, as far as I know. I see. I understand that. You must not steal the amber, the amber the reservoirs. For if you do, mm-hmm. if you do, a much greater evil will be released than this supposed savannas you speak of. What are you saying? There was already someone in them. Oh. No. What? Oh, but Merrick indeed. possesses a power. A power that. And she stops for a moment and then, like, buries her head against the wa- under the water a bit <coughs> and gets back up and goes, Leave this place, little thief. And stop being friends with Merrick. He only brings trouble and death to those he surrounds himself with. This will happen twice. He's been very useful. Plus, he's got this wardrobe filled with cats. Yes, I am aware yeah, of the wardrobe. Hmm. Then let me ask one more thing, dear lady. Are you aware of your husband having retrieved the book from the Undercroft two weeks past? She narrows her eyes up and goes, What are you speaking of? We approached your husband and the other paradigm to go on a quest with a bunch of dwarves. We, as you might imagine, were simply adventure seekers and were looking for treasure. Wait, so you're telling me that my husband knew of Merrick's arrival in the city as well? Well... We stood before him in council weeks ago. <sighs> she scoffs again <clears throat> and goes, fine, yes. And so you continued on the expedition with those dwarves. Yes, and, and we came back with, with great treasures. Uh, but your husband took from us something that we were told we would be allowed to keep. And even though it is a damaged item, those people who helped fund our expedition... We're certain that we return with it, and I would not expect that you would think that we as thieves would have the type of honor that would be befitting someone of your high stature. But I am not the sort of thief who goes back on my word. And your husband did promise us that we would keep these treasures, so we were quite surprised when he absconded with it. It is simply a book, and the damaged one at that. But if you have ever seen anything like it, I would at least wish to take that so that I could fulfill my obligations for those who place their trust in me on this expedition. Mercutio has entered in through the main foyer in disguise. Do we know? Yeah, you two can recognize him. <coughs> it's not a very good disguise. I saw him immediately. Wait, we can recognize he's, him? He's because... disguised enough so, like, if people knew him from, like, posters and stuff, or, like, just okay. a cursory glance, but you guys have been, like, mm-hmm. seen him recently. Okay. So, like, he's moved his eye patch from this side to this yeah, side. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like... So, so, so Eldra, Eldra goes, unfortunately, I haven't heard anything of the book of which you speak. Would you at least be willing to tell me where your husband might keep his library? I assure you, I will take nothing else. I am not that kind of thief. But I feel strongly that this is something that was due to me, and it was only because of deception that it was taken from me. And she, like, breathes out a bit and goes, My husband has been nothing to c- but kind to me in the years I have lived here in Lear, far from my brother and my family's discerning, or from my brother and my family's disorderly hand. Why should I turn against him? Because perhaps he has kept secrets from you. Secrets perhaps greater than the ones your brother has kept from you. Secrets. Everybody keeps secrets. Nobody doesn't. Nobody is alive that has that doesn't have secrets. I have no secrets. <laughs> I have lived on the streets of Lear my entire life. Ask me anything. I will be honest and open with you. Use your husband's gems to discern the truth of the words I say. I am the most honest man in Lear. You would be surprised. Give me a personality roll. The most honest man is a thief. <clears throat> Yes, that is Did why you... my book series is so engaging. Ah. 16. Ooh, mm. not bad. Oh, she's a About sucker. I've got a good roll with this uh, stupid die. She peers at you for a moment as if weighing her options. And... I hope she notices that in this entire time I haven't tried to sneak a glance. Right. And then, <clears throat> and then, says, and then says, there's a room down below 
known as the Observatory, in which my husband keeps a variety of his magical scrolls and books. I can't guarantee that what you're looking for is stored there, but that would be the first place I would look. Thank you, my lady. I apologize for having invaded your space here. And let me tell you this, for this small kindness, if ever you find yourself in a position where you shall need the skills of someone as low as I, you can always call upon me at the Duahan, and I shall be at your service. I'm certain I will. <clears throat> but leave Merrick. He brings nothing but trouble to those around him. I will take your words to heart. And, and keep I'm... hidden. If I see you again, I'll oh, call the guards on you. Man, Elder, we had such a great time I as immediately, kids. I, I bow with my back, showing great respect, mm -hmm. head to the door, and whisper, I am the knight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are you heading? <laughs> to the observatory. Ah. Because I know where it is, and I've been here before. But you're going to try to slip out and just like... Well, I'm going to slip out to the area outside of where she is, mm -hmm. but here. I'm going to wait, like, just inside here, so that, because I want to listen to make sure that the, that in the time I've been talking with her, because I've also been trying to draw out the conversation so that, like, the, the emergency will blow over and they go, oh, it must have been just cat, you know, Your or, other clock or a monkey or something, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so basically, if I feel like that things have kind of died down, then I will try to make my way down to the observatory. So you peer out of the spa, and yes. you see the thing that there's no guards particularly around, and you okay. like flit about there and hang out by the wall. Mm -hmm. And then after a little bit, you see Glalos exit from his office and, uh, and come strutting down. And he's wearing a cloak. But it's a cloak of the likes of which you have never seen before. And is if it, it pure silver? No. And oh. if it reminds you of anything... Is it Technicolor Dream? It, yeah. If it reminds you of anything, it reminds you of Merrick's items he gets from his wardrobe. Oh. And as, But the weirdest thing is, is that it reminds you of something else as well. As he walks down the hallway towards the entry door to go tell his guests that this grand ball can finally begin, the cloak seems to be a variety of stitched together... And it's artistic. So it doesn't look quite that horrific. But it seems to be a variety of stitched together human faces. There is one other time you have seen human faces present in this campaign. And it was with the spiders, spiders. Yes. down beneath in Death Shore. Yes. Wait, when did they have stitched faces? They were human faces. Yeah, right? they're they all human faces. <clears throat> Wait, how is that connected to the cloak? I don't understand. So it's like a cloak, cloak is of made face. of yeah. faces. Yes, <clears throat> but the spiders just had faces. Mm -hmm. Do they look very similar to the he's spider faces? Spider. Like he's just harvested spider these faces. spiders and made their faces into a cloak? If you didn't know any better, that's what you would guess. Oh, okay. Nice. Wow. All right. He might be like the dash or like he conquered the dungeon. Yeah. Oh, like no, if no, I no, were no, him, no, I would have gone no, down no. there and harvested like a whole bunch of what things. What do you think? I don't. I don't like this cloak. You I don't have a like feeling, this. This cloak's awesome, dude. This cloak's right up your alley. Sucks up magic like the spiders did. So this is perfect because oh. if he's about to start the ball, That's chaos awesome. will ensue. People will rush in. There'll be food and things like that. He'll be busy like once. talking to guests yep. and stuff like that. So this would be the perfect opportunity to uh, blend in and get down to the observatory. So you see him exit through this door here. Yes. Obviously heading out to the balcony. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you guys see Lalos come out of his come out of the door and finally come up to the top of the stairs and there's a loud huzzah that comes yes. up from the crowd and like a clapping resounds and goes, <clears throat> "My honored guests, it is lovely to see you all here tonight. I thank you for coming <clears throat> to this symposium. Symposium again." Ooh. I must introduce our fabled guest of honor, and he points down, and a couple of the orbs come over to where Merrick and Joven are, and they light up, so it shines a spotlight on Merrick, Ooh. and Hothart, like, slowly kind of moves away from them, and he's like, I don't like the lights, and they, like, shine down on you, and he goes, Merrick Farrar, esteemed honored guest, please, uh, if you happen to see him in the party, do grab him a drink, and, uh, probe his brain a bit, he has many interesting antidotes. I also like to announce that he is my uh, brother-in-law. Yes, the sister uh, or the brother of my lovely wife Eldra. So good to see you here tonight, Merrick. I do hope that what you find in the halls beyond will convince you of your talents. Ooh, convince me of my own talents? Yeah. Oh boy. Okay. And the and the various the various like members of the crowd like clap and stuff like that. 
Yes, yes, yes. It's a pleasure to be here. And then Lilas goes, and of course it would be a shame to uh, continue this ball without uh, pointing out the presence of Katros, another grand paradigm. And Katros like gives a sign, you know, and everybody claps. Yay! Does, does anyone throw like pennies? No. <laughs> um, <coughs> Hotel room key. Is she the only other paradigm here? What? Is she the only other paradigm? Apparently. Yeah, what's his name wasn't invited, if you recall. Zavalas? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he was invited. He extended oh, the invitation. Right. Yeah. Virgis wasn't an invited. Invitation. Yeah, Why isn't so, he here? You know, I don't expect to see him. I wanted Virgis to be my You don't know where Zavalas is at. No, I'm going to ask. Virgis is this weird robotic dude, right? Yeah. Okay. He's the one who got dismissed. Virgis, okay. yeah. yeah. He's <laughs> dismissed from class. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah. He's in so detention. Eventually, and Lalas goes, with that, I declare this ball officially begun. And he claps his hands together, and the doors open as if by magic, but it's really probably just sentient metal. <laughs> And they all open up, and the guests go, huzzah! And they, like, filter into the ballroom and the various sitting room or dining rooms on either side where they're, you know... Uh, what is the style of music? Things. Is there a harpsichord? The, there are a variety of musicians who are playing, and it seems to be a string quartet. Ooh. Like that. Uh, they're playing a variety of music stuff. People begin to mingle and talk back and forth to each other and dance. Um, the, there's also, uh, Lalos, you know, makes his way down the stairs and begins to mingle with people and stuff. You guys get filtered in. So where are you guys heading? What's the plan? So I just noticed that, like, why is it surprising that they're making metal sentient if it's called sentient metal? Like, people don't understand these things. <laughs> yeah. People don't, sentience isn't, like, the same, the it, same it, word. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it, perhaps it would have been better to say living metal for the first iteration and this is now so going to be sentient like it's not truly sentient it's a moderate difference but I can assure you from my standpoint as DM that name is the most adequate n- name I don't think lay people care I think as far as lay people are concerned it's always just been sentient like when they talk to these balls yeah, and they I mean, turn like, into things so, so like, it wouldn't yeah. be horrific if they like started talking yeah like it's sort of like nowadays when you read articles about like, AI and how dangerous it is most people are like, there's already Cortana in Siri. Isn't that already AI? Like, nobody really thinks it's an issue, right? It's only those few, like, high-level scientists and mathematicians yeah. that are going, you know, real AI is going to screw us See, all, right? Yeah, AI is no problem. But the moment you give it bodies that are better than man that could probably kill easily, that's when I start to get, mm, mm. It's interesting because it's almost as if the public has been uh, guided into this, think- into this way of thinking. Yeah. Into... What way of into, metal. into being okay with yeah. living metal beings oh. walking around. Because oh, they already think, oh, that's already sentient. Now I can just speak. Yep. Oh, I wasn't sure if you meant in like our actual no. world. So or... so where are you guys going? Oh. Well, I guess um, I'll go inside and mingle for a little bit. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go inside and spread more netro. It seems. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna... So each of you give me personality roles. Oh, in the meantime, oh yeah. Go you know, oh. someone's up in there and everyone's done. That's a 19. It's, it's time to uh, take one last look in Lalas' office. I got a two. <laughs> all right. You're gonna summon Lalas. I guess I get all yeah, of it. There's an okay. open space anyway. I might as well pop in there and see what's up. That's true. Who knows? Maybe he left like his house keys behind or like something <laughs> or cool on his desk. The, you can check out the treasure if you want. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. You should steal alloy. Talk to alloy. I robot. Uh, so you yeah, should... you should give him a copy of I robot in Jurassic Park when he says, "Oh, we have." We have Security. complete control. It's like, so you many... should read these two books before you decide that. <laughs> All right, so you slip into Alice's office. Yes. It's deserted. There aren't even any guards on detail. They're too busy running around. Perfect. Hey, was that curtain here before? No, it was not. Ooh. <gasps> oh, my that. gosh. It's a single it's sheet so of metal. Smooth. So as you start to, like, put your hands over yeah. it, like, the face suddenly appears. <gasps> Who are you? I do not <laughs> recognize you. Metal. Who are you? You were not here before. And it peers down at you, and it peers at you for a minute, and it goes, Were you here yesterday? And then the metal, like, the face in the metal, like, smiles at you and goes, Daedriel. Yes. Yes. Son were you of, here? Son of Garn. Yes. It has been a long time. Have we met? And it rotates the face a bit back and forth and goes, No. And we won't again. Oh, but why? It fills about and it goes, I'm assuming you're here to rob my master. Not exactly. <laughs> I'm sort of just visiting. Well, also exactly. Although, now that you're you're here... Wait, have you, were you here yesterday? I could have sworn when I was here yesterday you weren't here before. 
We move fast. Oh. Hmm. That's hmm. true. You also seem to have lost some weight. Are you thinner than you were before? We move fast. Hmm. Fair enough. We are perceptive. And we are already in control. Really? And then the face, like, melts back into the metal. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Fucking do, knew do, it. Do, 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 I knew it. Wait, it's old paradigms are made of it. Hmm? <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Knock, knock. knock. Do, you, do you want me to close the curtain back, or do you want me to leave it? I, I don't want you to... Uh... <laughs> this is... Gosh. All right, so, like, peers down at you is it's, like... It, see, it gets this look of annoyance, yeah. and then it, it you almost think it gets this like look of nostalgia on its face, as if it's remembering an old enemy. Oh. And it goes, close the curtain. Okay. Sorry to have disturbed you. In the middle of the man. be? What enemy? Might as well... Spanish? No, I can't help it. The treasure room's right there, isn't it? Oh, oh my god. god. All right, I have to take a peek. Okay. I didn't get to peek last time.